Hi, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing very well. <laughs> Please present yourself and tell us what you do. Uh, I'm Mislav. I'm the CEO of Amphnet. Uh, we're doing uh, electricity trading on blockchain and renewable energy investments with uh, Eternity Blockchain Infrastructure. Uh, I've been a developer software for five years. Then I started a company, got into Eternity Starfleet through a friend from my city, Luca. Uh, and then we went to Sofia, did the first week, passed, did the next four weeks, passed. And now we're here, I guess, <laughs> speaking for the conference. And um, what actually gets you involved with uh, blockchain? And uh, So I first found out... So I first found out about Bitcoin around 2010, which didn't really help me since I think I was, I don't know, 14 back yes, then. Quite yeah, and uh, yeah, but I learned it through an online forum, which I was visiting about like technology and stuff, and some people were mentioning it. So I did actually download the wallet, and I thought this is very stupid. Uh, this is useless, and then I just deleted it, and I didn't look at it for the next five, six years. Uh, when I found like coin market cap, I was like, what is this? There is something, there are like things which exist, which are traded. What's this? It was weird. It was funny. Then I saw Bitcoin. It was, seemed fun. Not my forte. Uh, but then I saw Ethereum, which was much more down my alley since I was a developer. And uh, basically I decided, you know, to visit some people who are doing this in Croatia. Turned out there was no, no specific community having meetups or conferences. So I decided to create a meetup. Uh, we created a meetup. Um, we expected like 50 people, maybe 100, but no, not 100, like 50 at max. Okay. But actually, three and a half thousand people applied for the meetup. Really? Yeah. And uh, so we had to like scrap it, you know, <laughs> just like make it as fast as we can. Um, so we turned, in, in the end, we made like 350 people arrived. Um, but uh, yeah, the response was huge. And at that point, I thought, like, okay. There is something to this. Um, and yeah, we started like thinking about what we could do in blockchain. And then I got involved with the crew that was doing blockchain in Croatia. We became good friends. And, and one thing, yeah, one, one thing leads to another. Money. Yeah, and then. Tell us more about what <coughs> is Ampnet exactly doing right now. OK, uh, well, basically what Ampnet is in general is um, a company which is focused on a new way of distributing electricity. In the last maybe five, ten years in electricity, the biggest one of those is the transition from large industrial scale fossil fuel electricity generation to basically decentralized each household for itself, solar panels, smaller wind turbines, even bigger ones with offshore wind and stuff like that are still smaller than like the nuclear power plants and gas power plants and stuff like that. And uh, basically the utilities, the classic, you know, electricity company which you get yes. your bills for and you pay for them, they existed since forever, they're starting to get in trouble. Like our biggest case study is RWE, which is like Germany's biggest utility company. They had their first losses in 2013 since 1949. So basically since they were founded. They never had a year where they lost money until 2013 because the entire country went solar and they had a huge amount of fossil fuel uh, investments and they were not bringing any money. So what people did in those situations is they opened energy communities, which is just like a couple of people investing into renewable energy and then buying and selling electricity amongst themselves. Um, and this is a good model. It works very well. There are around 2,000 in the European Union, 1,000 in the, in the United States, 50-ish billion dollar a year. But they're basically doing stuff manually. They do use software, of course, but it's often like Excel or some custom ERP or... Yeah, outdated. Yeah, basically not suited for their needs. And we saw a huge market potential, like look at all these people, a $50 billion industry that's critically underserved by software. And we decided to build the software for them. And the blockchain part came kind of naturally since the energy communities, there is around uh, 2,000 in the European Union. Each one works individually for themselves. And we thought, you know, why shouldn't they cooperate? And the, way, the easiest way for us to, for them to cooperate is to build a trading market on the blockchain where each and every one project which they invest, they can buy and sell amongst each other on our blockchain platform. What was the 
biggest um, um, challenge you had to overcome? Well, the biggest challenge we had to overcome is actually create a viable regulatory framework. Um, we did, even since we got the investment from Eternity and even after we opened the company, we pivoted the idea at least a couple of times, each and every time because of regulation. So we would find out something new about the regulatory framework in the European Union and states and said, okay, let's adapt to this. Um, what, yeah, basically t in the terms of technology, we're still not finished. The most complicated parts are still not complete. So maybe we'll get some hurdles there. But so far, by f far and large, the biggest issue has been regulation. regulation Complying because, yeah, electricity is a hugely regulated industry. So as much as finance is regulated, electricity is the same. Interesting. Um, since you are here for the Eternity's uh, first conference, A Universe, um, which of the presentation today had the biggest impact on you? So the biggest impact I'd say was the presentation on securities law in the United States, uh, which was, uh, please forgive me, can't remember the name of the speaker, but uh, it was a very eye-opening presentation. We, I, all the assumptions that the speaker made that uh, I, that he said, most of you are thinking that securities in the United States is a death penalty for a blockchain startup. And I did think that. And he was just making a case that it wasn't. That it was actually a trivial procedure, which is merely meant to protect the investors. To And yeah, basically now I think we can have a much more open mind in regards to how we're going to structure our uh, company once we enter the United States market, which should be pretty close. So I guess, yeah, free legal opinion is never a bother. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Um, what is your big prediction for 2020? What is the, the blockchain industry uh, direction for the next year? Well, I think 2020 is going to be the year when we kind of focus a bit more on the easier use cases of blockchain. I think like 2017, 2018, 2019, a bit less, but those 2017 and 2018 specifically were kind of the optimistic go get them years, you know, just we have this huge idea which is going to decentralize everything in the world. world and order, yeah, exactly. Very, very like even the place where we are now, the Institute of Crypto Anarchy was built on these principles. But each revolution in itself starts as an evolution. So I think 2020 will be a year of pragmatic. And I've gotten this opinion by speaking with people here today who have gotten the investment a year and a half ago. And we all have a common note, like, let's start small. Yes. Let's use the blockchain in maybe 10% of our application. And then later, we'll see how it scales. So I think it's going to be a year of uh, projects who are hybrid, combining classic software with a little bit of blockchain on the side. Interesting, very. And uh, do you sometimes preach blockchain to your friends and family? Often, uh, usually to. Um, I, I make I make a case out of never preaching investments. I have never in my life suggested an investment to anyone ever, which I think is a good rule to follow by because it's a chaotic market. So why why? You don't want the responsibility. <laughs> yeah, don't of don't want the responsibility of somebody getting dragged into you know debt because of you. Um, but I do actually, you know, preach the benefits of blockchain much more before than now uh, to primarily my colleagues in the IT industry. How do they you know, respond? Well, like bi bipolar, <laughs> I'd say. You know, you have a, you have a half of the people who are thrilled, mm -hmm. you know, who think, and basically those were the people who just when they heard about it, they got interested. Now they're in the space somehow, one way or the other. And you've got people who think it's complete. First, can you know, yes. no, bullshit, yeah. Yeah, they, they think it's complete bullshit. And uh, they'll, uh, the converting them, not very useful. Um, I mean, it's it's a technology at the end of the day. I don't think like all the, all the evangelist stuff that came later, I, I didn't really like it. I like it for the technology discussions and, and that's the way I approach it with uh, colleagues and friends. And my last question to you is, which is your favorite crypto city in the world? Well, that would have to be Berlin. Uh, I never visited. I did travel a lot in the past couple of years. Somehow my road has never taken me to Berlin. 
um, but uh, it's a city of arts and cultures, and I think it's a. Uh, I think I like the the Eternity conferences and the entire world of crypto is because there's a lot of a little bit people who are a bit off, you know. They're just yes, the, the, the outsiders are coming together. Yeah, they're just a bit too weird for the mainstream, and they're not wired like all the other people. And I feel really comfortable in the in the crowd crowds like these. And I think cities like Berlin have a lot to offer in this regard, whether it's uh, weird crypto people or weird artists or weird, you know whatever some other business uh, alternative business models people who are doing them so i like that i like the kind of progressive weird vibe of the cities and i heard berlin is Everybody like the like the mecca of <laughs> weirdness well i wish you go there very very soon and, and i, I definitely will. <laughs> yeah yeah thank you for the interview thank you very much for having me see you around see you